Dear Patriots, before the news starts, please, subscribe to our patriotic channel by clicking the subscribe button. Give us a thumbs up to this video. Don't forget to leave your opinion below in the comments section. Share the news on Facebook and Twitter so you friends see it. Thank you. Something stinks, Hannity points out what's suspicious about Las Vegas shooting media coverage. Fox News host Sean Hannity was recently joined by new network hire Tommy Lauren to discuss the Las Vegas shooting attack that claimed 58 victims' lives. However, they ended up having more to say about the aftermath of the shooting and what is strange about the mainstream media's response to it. They first addressed how liberals have been attempting to politicize the tragedy by having gun control laws passed before we can have a rational discussion about it. Tommy mentioned about them. To those out there that want to lecture us on gun sense, gun safety, a person who is hell-bent on murdering thousands of people would probably not be concerned with laws. Concurred Sean, if you have evil intentions in your heart, you're gonna find a way. Added Tommy, criminals, terrorists, psychos, they don't obey our laws. They don't care about your gun control. When you have a gun-free zone, you are neutering everyone there. Then Lauren floated a provocative question asking, here's my question though. Why are we spending all of this time, not us, but others in the news and others in the celebrity sphere, why are they spending so much time analyzing what kind of guns he used, how many he had? She continued, I want to know more about him and more about his friend. I want to know about the victims and their families. Asked Hannity, don't you find there is something off here? Really off? Agreed Tommy, where there's smoke there's fire. She went on, usually in situations like this you know everything about the person. Every Facebook page they've ever been on, everyone they've ever known, and all of a sudden, all we're talking about is the weapons he used and the firearms? No, something stinks. Do you think Hannity and Lauren are right? Miley Cyrus just wrote Hero Hillary a thank you note on live TV, what she said is so gross. Superstar singer Miley Cyrus was once America's sweetheart, but in her post Hannah Montana years she has been in a state of prolonged teenage rebellion that does not seem to have an end in sight. Part of Miley's very public acting out has involved become an outspoken liberal. Nauseatingly. Miley continues to be an ardent supporter of two-time failed Democratic presidential candidate Hillary Clinton. Hillary was recently interviewed by late-night talk show host Jimmy Fallon, who brought in Miley as a surprise guest to write a letter in front of Hillary thanking her for doing Hillary things. Hillary, whose narcissism and need for flattery seemingly knows no bounds, was asked softball questions by Fallon, like, do you think, like, if you were up against a different Republican? Would you have felt different? In a segment that can only be described as stomach turning, liberal Fallon then trotted out his female staff writers to thank Hillary in person, with one named Taryn gushing to the would be president. Thank you, Hillary Clinton, for being the first female presidential candidate nominated by a major party and also the first female senator of New York and also the first first lady to transcend first ladyhood to become secretary of state. I guess what I'm trying to say is, thank you, Hillary Clinton, for being the Hillary Clinton of American politics. Then, as a big surprise, Miley came out and began writing a note for Clinton. Wrote Cyrus while Hillary watched, thank you, Hill, thank you, Hillary, for being a constant beacon of strength, hope, and determination for me and millions of other young women. You've been a role model and an inspiration and a voice of reason in uncertain times. I could go on and on, but I'd like to get right to the point. Can I give you a hug?" replied Clinton, yes. Yes. Miley then exclaimed, I've been wanting to do that. Do you think the level of adoration Hillary need to function is disturbing? Fifty-nine Meat Eaters Dead Vegan Cook Writes Most Revolting Lib Post Yet About Vegas Shooting 
one sad but sadly predictable occurrence in the wake of the tragic Las Vegas mass shooting has been truly hateful and baseless comments made about the event by bigoted liberals trying to take tasteless cheat shots at conservatives. Perhaps the single lowest comment, however, came from a leftist radical from Wilkes-Barre, Pennsylvania named Delinda Jensen. The 60-year-old Jensen is a hardcore vegan who runs a food truck named Mother Nature Vegan Cuisine in the city. In a recent post on her now-deleted Facebook page after the mass shooting, the vegan wrote, Yes I am jaded. 59 meat eaters dead. How many animals will live because of this? Beneath that post, she added, I don't give a, expletive, about carnists anymore. Thankfully, the blowback against Jensen's unthinkable comments has been harsh. Her company has already gone out of business and she has had to put her food truck in storage. Said a contrite Jensen after the response to her post, I, expletive, up. Was it poorly written? Absolutely. Do I regret it? Yes. I am so sorry I wrote that. Delinda Nows claimed that she is sad that all those people died in the shooting, regardless what they eat. Asserted Jensen, meat eaters or not, no one deserves to die like that. She then dubiously claimed, I wasn't celebrating the death of those people. That's not how vegans think, we are non-violent. Are you glad people are not tolerating this woman's bigotry and heartlessness? Hysterical Chuck Todd just had a freakout on live TV about guns, he looked ridiculous. Chuck Todd recently had conservative National Review commentator David French for an interview on MSNBC's Meet the Press Daily, and the conversation devolved into liberal Todd having a fit about gun rights and French repeatedly calming him down. Asked an agitated Todd, like I said, you are not afraid to engage on this issue. When does someone's right to bear arms get to the point where it potentially infringes on someone's right to attend a concert in an outdoor setting and not feel like it is an unsafe experience? French replied to the question rationally by saying, I think there is an obvious answer to that. Someone's right to bear arms infringes upon my rights the instant they start to menace me with that weapon or threaten me with that weapon. And it's very difficult to use this particular shooting as some sort of paradigm with which to analyze the gun debate. This did not satisfy Todd, who said, getting more and more emotional, I'm fine with you having a gun, but I would find it in my rights that I want to make sure you are a responsible gun owner. So you know what, I want an extra amount of regulation, I want extra licensing, I want this or that. What about that line? I would argue it is a realistic ask of my of our rights, that's for sure. French answered him coolly and calmly, stating, the realistic answer is the present level of regulation that we have particularly as applied to concealed carried permit holders gives that assurance. Because the available data says that a concealed carry permit holder is somebody who is actually in many ways safer than a police officer. After French exited the show, Todd did not seem embarrassed about being so rattled, and said, if we wait to let cooler heads prevail in any of these we never talk about it. And in fact, if we applied the same logic to every other debate and every other crisis that this country faces that we do to the gun debate we never would have focused on any of those issues either. Do you think liberal gun control nuts like Chuck Todd all need someone like David French to calm them down? Fake Republican on MSNBC just called all gun owners bad parents. Liberal network MSNBC wants to avoid any real debate about gun rights versus, so they have often been bringing in moderate Republicans to represent the conservative side of the argument. Not surprisingly, many of these renos just so happen to support increasing federal control over guns. A classic example of this happened recently when MSNBC host Lawrence O'Donnell brought in self-proclaimed Republican David Frum, who runs liberal bias publication The Atlantic. During his interview, Frum stated that people who keep guns in the house are bad parents. Said moderate Republican Frum about the shooting and the gun rights debate, well, one of the things that we tell ourselves is that after these events, these terrible atrocities, is nothing changes, 
but, in fact, after Newtown, we have had five years of the most dramatic changes in American gun laws in a long time, all of them aimed at making guns more available in more places. He continued, giving a plug to his own magazine, that we have seen, and we detailed this in The Atlantic today, state after state says not only can you carry a weapon in a concealed way, you can carry it in an open way, you can carry it into a bar, you can carry it into a church, you can carry it into a daycare center, of all places. In Georgia, you can carry it everywhere all the way up to the TSA outpost at the airport. From then argued what would need to be changed to affect gun policy, in the process taking a dig at parents who want to lawfully protect their families from home invaders. Said David, until you persuade people that it is just dangerous to themselves, to their children, you're not a good parent if you have a gun in the house, you're not protecting your family, you're a bad parent if you have a gun in the house, until you drill that idea into people's heads and persuade them to change the way we changed about cigarettes and seatbelts, these technical fixes aren't going to accomplish a lot. Do you think David Frum is a textbook Reno? Krauthammer has been missing from Fox News for weeks, the devastating reason why is exposed. You might have noticed that Fox News commenter Charles Krauthammer has been missing in recent weeks. The reason why is very sad. Before we all leave, one quick update. Hundreds of you, literally hundreds have emailed, tweeted, or posted questions to me about the status of our colleague, Charles Krauthammer, said anchor Brad Bayer. Charles had a pre-planned surgery his doctor said he needed. He expected a speedy recovery but ran into some complications post-surgery. He is still in the hospital, making slow steady progress and recovery, said Bayer. He desperately wants to come back to the panel as soon as possible. Believe me, I speak to or email with his wife Robbie almost every day. And I share your thoughts and prayers. It will likely be a few more weeks, he said. And yes, he does get to watch his Washington Nationals first game of the playoffs against the Cubs, tomorrow night, so we're pulling for him. And thanks for asking about his status. He'll be back here soon I'm sure, said Bayer. The Fox News fans have showed their love, hundreds wishing him a speedy recovery. Sending prayers to at Krauthammer may the Lord watch over him. At Brett Bayer hashtag special report, wrote one user on Twitter. I might not always agree with him. But he's a very smart man and his voice is missed. Get well soon, wrote another.